What's going on, everybody? It's Carl Mines from Bar Mind Tech, and today we're going to be talking about Casa OS. So, there's been a lot of talk in my Discord server about Casa OS lately. People have been asking for simpler ways to work with Docker and Portainer and deploying different systems on their home web. And a few people have actually talked about how they like using Casa OS for the simplicity. So, I decided to make a video on it. And if you watch this video and it's all done, you could have a dashboard that looks just like this, too. So this is what Casa OS looks like. As you can see, we have the Docker apps, and we have Portainer, and we have all different stuff telling us about our system, and some uh, information like the date, the time, our system sitbacks, but we're getting into this further, but this is what you could do if you follow along and set up your own Casa OS machine. So let's get right into talking about Casa OS. So first, if we come over to their site, of course, they're gonna give you a whole bunch of information. I do have to say that Casa OS has a really cool website. Like it's dynamic so as you scroll through it like changes so Casa OS in theory is like your own cloud server kind of thing um, so that's why it gives you this cool dashboard and you can manage everything off of it it gives you a lot of information and then it starts to show you like the self-hosted apps you could host so it does go with docker and they have a ton of different dockers that you can run off of it and you could also still enter your own so you can enter like custom docker containers like how we do in Portainer so if there is a container you want, it's not on their template, you can still get it. So it just gives you information about the Casa OS. They have a little demonstration video showing you how it works. But I'm going to do that too. And then we could also build out some different services with it. We're just going to look at it in the simplest form, you know, as an alternative to Portainer really. And a simpler way to host Docker. Casa OS was built and it does run on the Zima board. It also can run on pretty much any Ubuntu, Debian... Raspberry Pi OS, and it runs on the Raspberry Pi, you can run on the Intel NUC, as they say, the Zemo board it comes on, but you can also run it on pretty much any machine, run Ubuntu, Debian, um, there's a couple flavors, I think it's just Ubuntu and Debian mainly, I think you can run a CentOS machine too, that they know they have some more information on their GitHub. It was created by Ice Whale, who is the creators of the Zemo board, and if we come down here, they kind of give you a little information. So they give you the supported systems. So you got Debian, Ubuntu, Raspberry Pi OS, Elementary, Armbian. So these are some other flavors that aren't as common. And then they're still testing on Alpine, OpenWord, and Arch. So you can test it out if you want, if you want to spin up a VM and test it out. Installing Casa OS is super simple. You just got to pull a wget, it installs everything, and then you're all set. It runs Casa OS. And if you want to uninstall it, you just run the uninstall command but if we come back over to the website it does show off a ton of the different apps that you can run on Casa OS and if you realize it's a lot of the similar stuff that we run on docker and portainer using our app template so let's go through enough of this and uh, let's start the setup so if I come over here into the barmine tech server because they have a couple of VMs over here but Casa is the new one that we're gonna run so I just set up this new machine, and of course my machine is going to be different than yours, this is just a test machine, but if you want to actually run Casa OS and have it be your main self-hosted server, I would give it more resources, so probably you know closer to like 8 gigs of RAM, maybe 4 cores, stuff like that, but a simple Ubuntu machine is all you need, so I'm just going to come in here and grab the IP real quick. So this is a brand new Ubuntu machine. I just built up the machine yesterday just so we can go over the install process. So I'm just going to log in. And then like on any machine that I have, we're going to clear and we're going to do a sudo app update. So I want to get the latest repositories and updates so when we do install COS OS we have everything that we'll need. So I'm just going to run a sudo app update and upgrade and then we'll be right back. So I just finished updating the machine, so I'm just going to clear it, and then we're going to come back over to the GitHub. Of course, I'll leave a link to this down below. I'll leave a link to both sites, the GitHub and their website. So we're just going to come over here, and we're going to grab the install script. So we're just going to copy that command, open up my terminal again, and I'm just going to paste it, and I'm going to run it. And you can see over here, Casa OS is starting to install, and it's going to go in and install the dependencies it needs, and anything else so we can run Casa OS on the machine. So that installs, we're just going to talk a little bit. I originally thought like it was the core OS. I didn't think it was like a uh, like a program that ran off of it. So how I'm seeing it, like Cos OS is kind of a service when you run it this way. I do think that you could actually run it as an OS, like if you get it on the Zima board. 
it comes installed on it and that's how it runs off of it but if we run it this way we're running it as a service which is fine for me because Casa OS does give you a lot of different services and features that make life a lot simpler if you're newer to home web and or hosting your own servers um, it's going to give you the simplicity of hosting dockers and other services and just give you a simpler environment to mess around with and help you out if you want to try to learn new things like I said, I know some people have been talking about it in my Discord. There's a lot of talk about using Docker and Portainer. And some people said they like using Casa OS for the simplicity compared to Docker or Portainer. So, I don't know. I've been trying it out. I think it's cool. It gives you a cool dashboard. It gives you a nice app store uh, of Dockers, of course. And it does still give you the availability to add your own Dockers in. So, if you see something on Docker Hub you want to use, you can still add it in it's just another option and you can still install portainer so you still can put portainer on there a custom app template and then still run all the dockers off like the nova spirit uh, app template if you want so it does give you a lot of options i guess it really just comes down to at the end of the day which one do you prefer to run if you want you know something like this that has all built-in dashboard and everything all in one cos os could be a really good option or if you like run in portainer and docker portainer and docker could be a good option it really comes down to whichever one you like, but that's enough of that. Let's get back to the Casa OS install. So you can see over here that Casa OS is all set, and if we come over here, it gives us the uh, URL, actually it gives us the IP address to get to the Casa OS server, so there's no port that it runs off of. It just actually runs off of the local IP, so we'll just go over there real quick. 249. And here we go, it's going to pull up the Casa OS dashboard, and this is how it looks for the first time. It's going to ask you to make an account. So we'll just make an account. And we'll set that up. I don't want to save it. And we can accept that. And here we are in our Casa OS dashboard. So the first thing you can see, we have the date and time. We have the system status. We have how much the storage is available on the disk and then it's also going to give you some network status so if, actually if I come back over to this one you can see that there's some network traffic on the machine so you can see it's fluctuating going up and down uh, but this one's brand new so it's just starting we can sync our data with sync thing I'm not really sure what that tool is and then if you have smart devices in the house then you can link it with home automation but we have our files so we have file explorer so it's just going to pull the directories off the local machine and you can also open up the app store over here and this is pretty much all the docker containers so it does have a lot of the common dockers you're going to be using so right now you can see it's filtered by all so it's going to show us everything and it looks like it's in alphabetical order so just some common ones that we've talked about we have adguard home we have this chat gpt if you want to self-host a, a version of that deluge duplicity mb mb stat we have handbrake Jellyfin, we've talked about this one, we've talked about a lot of these actually, we have Ambi, we have all these different containers, we have Overseer, Plex, Portainer, Pi-hole, a ton of stuff that we've actually worked with before, and you can see if we wanted to come in here and we just wanted to add something, we can come over here and let's say we want to do Cloudflare, so we'll just install that, and this would be the process to install a new container. So you can see over here now that Cloudflare has installed, we can open it up, and it's going to redirect you, and in here you can enter your token, and you can set up your Cloudflare token. But there are the other containers, so like, uh, you know, I like AdGuard Home. If you are going to run AdGuard Home, you do need to stop the systemd resolve function, because it doesn't need to use the local DNS. Just like I've talked about this when we do Pi-hole and Docker, so if you're if you're using that, I'll leave a link below to a GitHub write-up that gives you the commands of how to turn off DNS, so you can install AdGuard Home or anything else because the actual local machine is using 53, so you can't install AdGuard, um, simply. But that's okay. But it does have all these other containers, and if you look up here, I know it's tucked in the corner. Hold on. We'll move that back down, and uh, over here you can actually see we can do a custom install. And over here, similar to Importainer, how if you want to write up your own Docker image, you can take the name, the title, so you can either pull it from the docker hub with a tag or I'm pretty sure you could put the compose in there but you would just fill in what port you would give it the ports over here you can give it the volume so it's marked and then from there you could add your own custom docker container off of docker hub so those are the basic features that I've noticed with 
uh, Casa OS, there's some widget settings, you can change stuff, you don't want certain things showing. But other than that, that's really for the most part what we have. Then we have our settings up here, so we can change it, so you can see your latest version, you can restart the service, you can change what web port it uses, so it defaults to 80, but you don't need to use it when you uh, open it up, so that's cool. You can change the search engine, so over here if you do want to search something you can, similar to how we do it in Flame Dashboard. Uh, we do need to do it, type it right though. And we can see over here if we search up Barmer Tech, unfortunately nothing comes up on DuckDuckGo, but I bet if we change it to Google we can. So let's just change it over here. So you can see I just clicked over here on the settings, we change it to Google, and then we'll try again. And here we go, here's the Barmerine Tech, we got the Barmerine Tech Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, so we're all set. But that's Casa OS, it is a simpler home dashboard, multi-tool you could use, it's sort of like a big Swiss Army knife. It's got a lot of stuff in it that could be useful if you're looking to get into home hosting, or hosting your own services, or maybe you're new to home lab and, and you just want something simple. It's, it's one script to install it after you set up your first Ubuntu machine. And then everything else is there. You can easily pull in dockers, you can turn them on, you can manage them. So I can see why a lot of people do prefer to use Casa OS over maybe hosting it with Docker or Portainer. I think after you get a little more experience, you'll find Portainer is just as easy. But it's good to have. It's another good tool, and it does come on the Zima board. So if you do have a Zima board, this is the default OS that's going to be coming with it. But that's enough of that. I hope you guys like this video. I do want to thank everybody for over a thousand subscribers. It's a big milestone for the channel. And we've been talking a lot in the Discord about different projects and everything else. So do make sure to check out the Discord server and come chat with us. And if you have any questions or you want to talk about anything that you might want to see in a future video, we talk about it right in there. So I hope you guys like the video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.